on the channel, we finish up the Ant-Man and the Wasp movie wave as we take a look at Cassie Lang to build a figure and we rank the entire wave from my least favorite to my favorite. The Here and welcome back to the channel for another Marvel Legends set rankings and build a figure review. And today we got the build a figure Cassie Lang from the Ant Man and the Wasps wave. And we're going to rank them later on in this video, but first we're going to take a look at the Cassie Lang build a figure. But remember, for all your Marvel Legends needs and a whole lot more, make sure you're hitting up Entertainment Earth. Use discount code Kyle, save yourself 10% on all in stock items, anything over $59 does ship free and a very interesting wave as a whole here and we're going to talk about that in a little bit but let's dive into the cassie lang build a figure this build a figure feels definitely different it does harken back to the old ant-man build a figure of yesteryear the deluxe figure we'll compare that later on in this video here but this definitely feels different it feels pretty cool and it feels interesting because this wave is the ant-man and the wasp movie wave but it really does feel almost more comic wave than mcu wave i guess it's a mix really uh but just an interesting one and a different interesting sized build of figures a lot of time we get the chunky looking figures this is a very tall and lean of course giant size cassie lang figure so definitely an interesting one but let's dive into the accessories what she comes with now we do get two hands with her extra hands you get Two gripping hands, open hands, whatever you want to call it, and you get two fisted hands. So you can mix and match, choose your own hand adventure, however you want her to be. You can do that. Of course, gloved hands. you got the purple and the silver and the black attack going on. Very good. Hands are hands, as we always say, choose your own hand adventure. But where it really came to uh, notice here was the head sculpt. So really like a Build-A-Figure with getting two heads, the best of both worlds here. Choose your own head adventure. How about that? But I have her here with the masked head on first. But let's take a look at the unmasked head here. Of course, it is Cassie Lang. And I got to say, this upsized head looks good. I don't know the actress's name, but looks just like her from the images I've seen and all that kind of stuff. A very, very good head sculpt here. I really do like the looks of this. Have to imagine we're going to get a small version of her eventually. Probably the same thing. It's almost, you can almost consider this like a two-up if you're familiar with that term. They'll shrink it back down. We'll probably have this head in the future, so I guess we'll stay tuned for that. But a beautiful head sculpt on this really does look good. It looks just like uh, the person shrunken down to action figure form. You got the brown hair here, and you even got the articulation on the hair on the ponytail there. I like that extra attention to detail. A little hair going down on the sides. A very good head, a very good head sculpt on this one. And this head over here isn't so bad either. I like the masked head. Feels very Ant-Man-like, of course. Nice, of course, as well. The silver, black, and purple attack going on. Love the purple lenses on the mask. You can see the eyes back behind there. Of course, it's a very uh, mechanical-looking head and things like that, but definitely a good one. It is definitely on brand for the Ant-Man movie, of course, and what she represented in the movie as well. So it looks really good here. I have no issues with this head at all. Head moves up, down, side to side, all around. Plenty of movement there. Arms all the way around, bicep cut, double-jointed, pinless elbows. How about that? Hands removable, hands back, force, side to side as usual. Big old hula hoop at the top. She's ready to do the hula hoop if she needs to. Then a traditional ab crunch as well, and you can even hear it. There you go. So you got that going there. No waist articulation, but she can do those big old Cassie Lang splits if she needs to be on the floor exercises or the balance beam. She can mess around with either of them if she needs to. Very tight thigh cut right here. Double jointed pinless knees over here. No boot cut on this one, but you do get the ankles back for side to side. I love the old Chuck Taylor Converse's down here as well. Looking really nice with the white and the purple. Just an all-around good-looking figure here. Plenty of movement. Feels really good in hand. We always talk about that. Every once in a while, you get a figure that just moves really good in your hand, doesn't fight you, that it all works together. That's how this one feels here. Just feels like a really, really good figure. Really do like what I see here. Of course, does she fit on a ringside stand if you need her on a stand? Uh, use the Mattel stands, I always say. And what do you know? She does fit very tight, but she will fit on a stand if you need her to, so you can't put her there uh, if need be. So a very good figure. Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen the movie yet, like I keep saying in these reviews, but I will see it eventually, and we'll see. I think she takes a little bit bigger role than the other movies of just being a little kid. Sounds like she's helping out this time, earning her keep, earning her allowance, and it'll be interesting to see where she goes in future movies. Isn't there going to be a Young Avengers, and I think she's going to be maybe be a part of that. I guess we'll see what happens there, but of course, talk about that Ant-Man build-a-figure deluxe figure from back in the day. 
Got him right here looking good. So you can pair these two up, of course. Uh, it's funny, if you hold these guys just by themselves right here, it just feels like they're normal figures. You kind of need the six-inch scale figures uh, beside them. And I guess I'll pull the Wasp out right there. So you can kind of see that dynamic, that size difference there. So you can really tell what's going on between these two. But very cool. You guys know I'm a sucker for a big figure. This one was feeling a little bit different than her usual Build-A-Figure, so I am here for this. I like what we got here with the Cassie Lane Build-A-Figure. But what about the rest of the set? A very interesting set. Going to be a tough set to rank for me, but we got to do it. We're going to do it right here on the channel, so stay tuned and get your list together. Like I always say, is it's time to rank the Ant-Man and the Wasp Build-A-Figure Cassie Lang wave from my least favorite to my favorite. All right, let's get down to business. Let's rank this set from my least favorite to my favorite. And once again, make sure you get your list together. Make sure you put it in the comments down below. It's always tough to rank them, but it is fun to do. And it is kind of a split up team here. You got four members of the comic book variety, four members from the movie variety. So an interesting split, a little bit of something for everybody. Really love the idea of some of these deep cut comic book characters finally getting a time to shine. I think that is really cool. And obviously, you got to have the main characters from the movie. So a little bit of something for everybody is really how I view this wave at the end of the day. But we're going to start it off, and we got eight figures here. And you know who I'm going to start it off, who comes in last place for me? This is a figure that I started to hate after the review. I didn't, I, if you watched the review, I didn't say it was the greatest thing since sliced bread. I said I was a little disappointed. And after, the more I sat with it, the more I played around with it, I guess, for lack of better terms, I liked it less and less. And that is King the Conqueror. I feel like this is almost just a statue here. There's not a lot you can do with it. The posability is absolutely terrible. Obviously, maybe it is just like he is in the movie. I don't know. Haven't seen it yet. But he doesn't have any arm rotation. He is limited. He's basically stuck in this position, moving like this. That's all he's got going for him. Now, it does look like Kang. It looks like a movie version of Kang. So it does look like what it's trying to be. But as far as I go back, if I was a little kid playing with this, I'd be very disappointed with this figure. There's no accessories, no weapons, anything like that. Very limited articulation, especially compared to some of the other figures in this set here. Just not a lot going on here. And that's just not what I was looking for. And he easily was number eight for me doing this whole list here. Now we got to go on. We got to look at number seven here. And number seven is not a bad figure at all. I do strongly recommend you have at least a version, a version of this character in your collection. But number seven, I'm going to go Ultron. And now this is a cool figure. I don't have a lot of gripes with this. It does get the point across. It is a good looking figure. It's just we had one so recent, I feel like we didn't need this one quite yet. Wait a year, wait a couple of years because yes, that last Ultron was a popular figure, but it's still, you can still find it. You can still find it. You might pay up a little bit more than retail, but it's not like it's a $200 figure or something like that. And it, maybe it just, this just doesn't have the newness factor. It's basically the exact same figure painted differently with a different head. So looking at it that way for me, didn't do a whole lot for me. Now, if you missed that back in the day, I could say, oh yeah, this is the definitive Ultron that I was looking for. Maybe he'll be a little higher on your list. But once again, this is my list, putting this Ultron here at number seven. Now it's getting tough. We're gonna go to number six here. And number six, I'm gonna go to the regular Ant-Man. Not a ton of meat on the bone with this one. I do think the Paul Rudd head sculpt is really, really good on this one. Uh, but just not my favorite Ant-Man costume, especially in this variety. However, I might play a little that long game. Like I said in the review, I might get the Wasp and Ant-Man. I might buy a second set to have one with the regular heads, one with the masked heads. We'll see what happens there. But easily for me, Ant-Man down here at the end, gonna put him at number six. Now we turn attention to number five. Oh boy, oh boy. You know, number five, it's getting close. From here on out, it's pretty close for me. Uh, but I'm going to go number five, the Wasp. I guess she'll stick right there with Ant-Man. A good figure, definitely an improvement over former ones we've had in the past. I like the dual head aspect here. Love the colors, love the wings. A lot to like about this figure. Maybe it's just not uh, relating to the movie quite yet or being a big Wasp comic book fan. I don't know, but we're going to stick this one here at number five. Now we're down to the final four. Oh, March Madness taking over here today. And at number four, you know what? I think I'm going to go Crossfire. Now, Crossfire is a character I am not super familiar with. I'd heard the name. Can't really tell you any stories I've read, anything like that. He looks a lot like Lifeline from G.I. Joe. He looks like the Swiss Superman Cesaro a little bit. Still a cool figure. I love some of these deep cut figures getting added to the line. Have him squaring off against your Moon Knight, your Punisher, your Ant-Man, of course, things like that. 
And I do like the deep cut character here because Marvel, they could have gave us another Iron Man, another Captain America, another character we're just bombarded with all the time. So when we do get deep cuts like these, I really do like it, even if I'm not familiar with the character here. And this looks good. I like the weapons, like the effects. A good figure at the end of the day. Crossfire going to come in at number four. Down to the final three. Oh my gosh, this is getting uh, really close here. Huh, how am I going to do this? Well, I think I'm going to go... Ah, it's tough. This is tough between these three. I think I'm going to go future Ant-Man, and the only reason I'm going to give him at number three is because I'm not familiar with the character at all, but this is a cool Ant-Man. This is the sleeper of the set. This is the one that blew me away a lot more than I anticipated. This was kind of a throwaway character when I first started thinking about this wave because didn't know him, never heard of him, never seen this costume. But this is one, and maybe it's just mine. It's not even double-jointed, uh, pinless, or it's double-jointed, but it's not pinless. Uh, but it still feels really good in hand. I like the movements of this one. This one truly feels like an Ant-Man is what he feels like. The big old ant head on him is really cool. Like the posability, like the movability with him, even without the uh, pinless joints on him. Still a good-looking figure and a bit of a surprise hit for me in this wave here. Makes me want to read up on the character a little bit more and find out a little bit more information about the Ant-Man from the future. The one that brought dipping dots to our modern generation. We owe him a debt of gratitude right here. All right, now we're down to the final two. And it really is a pick em. You asked me two weeks from now, they very easily could flip-flop and fly uh, to a different position. But I'm just going to go Cassie Lang at number two, the Build-A-Figure. And I'm going to go Egghead at number one. Cassie Lang, a big figure, a Build-A-Figure. Usually that is my wheelhouse. But this just feels really cool in hand. It looks cool, and it feels different. And a lot of times we get, you know, you get the Abominations, you get the Chodes. You get stuff that feels very similar, the, you know, the Grizzlies, things like that. You get a lot of that kind of stuff. Uh, this felt different to me. Yes we had an Ant-Man before, but this pairs uh, perfectly with that Ant-Man. So I just really like this one. I love the dual head. I love the extra hands. Just love it. So it's going to go at number two for me. It just really hit the sweet spot for me and what I was looking for, I guess, in this line, apparently, because it came in at number two. And Egghead, a guy I've heard about, once again, a lot like Crossfire. I know a little bit more about Egghead. I, I uh, remember a Captain America comic when I was a kid with him in there. But definitely cool. If you're trying to do a Dan Aykroyd Coneheads uh, custom, bam, there you go. You want to move this guy over into G.I. Joe world or something like that as a crazy scientist, there you go. You wanted an egghead, there you go. But just definitely a great one for customizers as well. You pop this head on off, you put any head you want on there. It's a bigger scientist body. We always get that skinny body style from Marvel Legends. This is a little bit thicker, a little bit chunkier, I guess, body style than that really rail thin one that we always get. So that looks really good. All in all, a really good figure. It just has great coloring to it. Love the lab coat. Love the head. Love the glasses. Love the little Professor Pistol there. Just like a little last line of defense. You know, he's not on the front lines. He's going to protect his science lab, things like that. Definitely works here. And uh, just like I said with Crossfire, getting us a deep cut into the line. Uh, we always got to shine on those moments because we don't get the eggheads on a usual basis. Nor are they probably warranted on a usual basis. I get that as well. But just feels really cool. The customizability on this one. Just a lot to like about this egghead. And a lot to like about this entire wave. A little bit of a sleeper wave. There's always some duds. And there's always some awesome superheroes in a wave like this. And this wave had a little bit of something for everybody. I talked about it a little bit comic side you got movie side you got some duds in the kang and the articulation ultron feels like a early re-release of course you got to have your movie stars from the movie you get the deep cuts and the future ant man the crossfire and the egghead and you get a very solid build a figure so to me this is a wave worth picking up yes i can see playing the long game maybe some deals will be here to be had on some of these but definitely a cool wave and a little bit of something for everybody and that's my final verdict on this Ant-Man wave. But what say you guys and gals out there in YouTube land? What are your thoughts on this wave? You picking all these up? You picking and choosing? You passing? Well, let me know in the comments down below. And of course, put your list in order down below. That is the fun. That is the challenge. And of course, while you're here, don't forget to like this very video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. We got videos every single day, as you guys know by now. Even more content on Patreon, including early access to videos like this. Bonus content, exclusive content, giveaways, Q&As, you name it. It's all over there on the old Patreon channel. You can also support the channel over at ProWrestlingTees.com. Search Kyle Peterson. And don't forget social media, SirPaul64 on Twitter. Instagram, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson. So for the Marvel Legends Ant-Man Build-A-Figure Wave of Cassie Lang, I am Kyle, and I'll see you guys all real soon.